Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have a second example to help us understand what convolution means, at least in a graphical sense. Here we have two functions. We have a f of t and g of t, and the best way to illustrate it is graphically what these functions are. f of t is equal to 1 between 0 and 1, and it's equal to 2 between 1 and 2. g of t is equal to 1 between 0 and 1. The convolution between f and g, the way it's written here, is equal to the integral from 0 to t of f of tau, which is a dummy variable, times g of t minus tau d tau. And what does that really mean? What does g of t minus tau really mean? Well, what we do first is we fold g of t. We simply get the mirror image about the vertical axis of g of t, and we get g of negative tau. Again, we use the dummy variable time. We say tau. We simply fold over g of t, and we make that into g of negative tau. Then we begin to slide g of tau, and so we now write as g of t minus tau, which means that as t changes, it begins to slide like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slide g of t, or in this case, g of t minus tau, across f of t. And that's graphically the definition of the convolution of f of t and g of t. So as we're sliding across, we're going to have an overlap between the two functions. But notice as it continues into this region, the overlap between f of t and g of t will be different. Here the height of f of t will only be 1, and here the height of f of t will be 2. So we'll have to separate those two overlaps. And finally we'll continue so that only a part of the overlap is between this back part of function f of t, and so then we can go ahead and calculate what the convolution is of each of these regions. Notice that once t is greater than 3, there's no longer any overlap, and the convolution of f of t and g of t at that point will be equal to 0. But what is it here? But remember, graphically the definition, it's going to be the height of the first function. So we can say here that f of t convolved with g of t is equal to the height of the first function, which is going to be f of t, which is going to be 1, times the height of the second function, which is the folded g of t, but that's also going to be 1, times the amount of the overlap. And the overlap is going to be the front part of the g of t, or I should say g of t minus tau, is going to be t minus 0. So it's going to be times t minus 0, which is the amount of the overlap. So 1 times 1 times t, it's simply equal to t. That's a linear function. That means that the height increases at a 45 degree angle. So this is simply y equals, let's say, mx plus b. The slope here is 1. So we can see that the height and the distance, the run, will be equal to one another. If we're going to graph that, it will look as follows. Here we have f convolved with g. Here is t. And as t increases from 0 to 1, because this is only good from 0 to 1, it's a linear function like this. And when this reaches 1, we have a height of 1. So that's what we mean by the convolution equals t. Now we're going to do it for the second region, but notice there's going to be two different types of overlap. So in this region, from 1 to 2, we can say that f convolved with g is going to be equal, we'll take the first region, is going to be the height of the one function times the height of the second function. In this case, again, the height of both is equal to 1. So it's going to be 1 times 1 times the overlap, which is going to be 1 minus t minus 1. So the overlap is going to be the difference of those two, which is 1 minus the quantity t minus 1. And then we have to add to that the second overlap. But here the height of the two functions will be 2 and 1. So we have the height of the second region here is 2 for the first function, 1 for the sliding function, times the overlap, which is going to be t minus 1, like this. Now we simply have to add those together, so that means this is equal to, we have 1 times 1 times 1, which is, so actually have a 1 minus a minus 1, which is 2. So we have 1 times 2, which is 2, and 1 times a minus t, which is minus t, and then here we have plus 
2 times t and 2 times a negative 1, which is negative 2. Notice 2 minus 2 is 0, and minus t plus 2t gives us exactly the same result for the first portion of the slide. Again, it's t. That means for the next uh, value of t going from 1 to 2, the equation is still the same. It's still a linear function like that. It continues in the same direction. So up to the value of t equals 2, it continues in the same direction. Slope equals 1. So you can see that the convolution here will continue in this direction. Finally, the third region there. Now again, we can say that the convolution of f and g is equal to the height of the first function, which is going to be equal to 2, times the height of the sliding function, which is going to be equal to 1, times the overlap, which is going to be from 2 to t minus 1, the difference between 2 and t minus 1, so this is going to be 2 minus t minus 1. This is going to be equal to 2 times 2 minus a minus 1, which is 3, and minus t. So finally, this is equal to 6 minus 2t. And if we were to graph that on here, you can see that the slope is now negative. It's twice as much as before. And when t is equal to 3, 6 minus 6 is 0, then you get back to 0. So when t is equal to 3, you get back to 0. So the function goes like this. We can do one more check. What is the value according to that equation when t is equal to 2? Hopefully, it is equal to 2. So let's go here. If t equals 2, we have 6 minus 4, which is 2, and that checks. So we have a complete graph here. This graph represents the convolution of f and g, and graphically, that's how we find the values that allow us to graph this particular function. And that's how it's done.